Um, water hose, spray them right in the face. Spray them in the face. Throw a bucket of water on them. Fire extinguisher, do not spray a dry chemical extinguisher into the dog's mouth or eyes. Please God. Um, so no dry chems. If you have a CO2 extinguisher, by all means, hit them with it. Um, it's cold air. It's not going to hurt them. It's going to take the breath away for a second, which is kind of a, a bonus at that point. A broom to shove the aggressor back. If you have one that's continually like putting a dog into a corner, use a broom, push him back. Don't beat the dog with the broom. Just <laughs> use the broom and push him back. Beating a dog will not get a dog off another dog. Most of the time, beating a dog will not get a dog off another dog. Direct stop. If you haven't ever heard of direct stop, stop uh, there's a couple of products like it. It's a citronella burst um, that you can hit an aggressive dog with or a dog that's lashed, and it's immediate like. Some people will say pepper spray. I don't recommend pepper spray. Like bear mace? Is yeah. it something like that? <laughs> um, uh, I'm not a fan. Um, that is the most scared I've ever been in my life. When I was a police officer, we had to get pepper sprayed. Um, I would rather be tased 50 times than ever be pepper sprayed again in my life. Oh. So remember, if you use pepper spray to separate dogs, you're in that cloud. Um, so welcome to hell. Um, <laughs> let me tell you why. I, I would not recommend it. Citronella, I can deal with, right? The mosquitoes won't bite me afterwards. I'm cool with that. Um, but citronella, they also make like bark collars that spray citronella. It yeah. is, it works. Dogs hate it. So if you can do something like that to get them separated, direct stop or anything along those product lines, I'm sure you can get on Amazon and find them. That's something that doesn't need to be like professional grade or anything. Nope. And you spray that into their face? Mm -hmm. or right into their face. Okay. Right into their face. Because you're not, I mean, you know, you're not going to kind of like get up and, you know, like you're putting in a, like breath mint or something like that. But you're going to be able to basically give them a burst in their face and it's going to, make their eyes water and take both of them hopefully distract them enough is that something that's going to affect you being in that cloud to where it's over overwhelming no i'll take citronella any day versus pepper spray any day but is it is it like a like say for example is it going to be hard to breathe or anything in that area? maybe if you have asthma it could be All right. um, you need to be but remember we should be separating them and getting them out of that area Right, so it's not like we should be standing there in the cloud, like, well, this shit sucks. <laughs> not, not, gonna, not gonna work. Um, leash pressure gag reflex. If you know how to do this properly, I can separate any dog off of a bite with leash pressure gag reflex. No matter how bad um, it is. Mm -hmm. no. Yeah, if I can take uh, my 85 pound Mally off a of bite. No. Yeah, because in, in K9 Academy, you had to learn how to take your dog. There's two ways to get your dog off a of bite call off. Which, when you have a Mally Shepherd, uh, you're about 50 50 whether he's having a good day or a bad day and how long he's been on the bite. Um, and the other one was gag reflex. And so basically, you're going to take the collar, and if you have a dog that likes to bite and doesn't let go, I can easily show you um, how to get the dog to let go. But literally, you're going to slide the collar up the throat as far as you can, and then you're going to put pressure just like that. And there's a gag reflex here, and if you hit it right, you'll know it because the dog's immediately going to spit. Immediately. Pedro was a jerk. Um, he would literally, it was the, the worst thing I ever did was I went to do a church demonstration, which was really cool that the church loved it until I remembered that I forgot his e-collar and uh, Pedro doesn't like coming off the bite. And so Pedro is making me like tongue out choke him to take him off the bite suit in front of the whole church. Um, <laughs> so, cause I'm like, Pedro, you know, boost, boost, can say, which is drop it and come back to my side. Right. And check, drop it, you know, boost, can say, boost, can say. And he's like. Mm -mm. And you can tell when he didn't want to come off the bike because he would do this whine, like this really pit pitiful whine. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> like the one time I want you to come off the bike with no, you know, like, poosh, and I'll say. And like, he's not doing it. I'm like, okay, I'll do this real quiet. I'll just get him real quick. And I slide it up. And I'm like, and once you start, you don't want to give him to the dog because then he's going to think he can win, right? So I'm like, I'm trying to, yeah. Next thing you know, he's like, <laughs> trying, to, trying to stay on the bike, right? And uh, yeah. Yeah, so the church wasn't, they didn't invite me back. <laughs> um, picking up the back legs, the wheelbarrow. Just be advised, just be aware, right? With this one, the leash pressure gag reflex, and picking up the back legs, there's a good chance the dog's spinning around to bite you. So you need to be prepared for that. So you better be like swinging him like a figure skater when he comes off that bike. <laughs> because if he can get his mouth towards you, you're getting bit. So you need to remember, any time that you're going to do any of these, where you're going to be close to that dog's mouth, you're probably getting bit. Oh. Can you explain right. to them why you want a wheelbarrow? Yeah, so with the back legs, right, we're going to pick them up, 
and we're going to try to get his front paws to the point where they're barely touching the ground, right? Because then in his mind, instead of biting, all of a sudden he's like, my feet aren't on the ground. What the heck's going on? So he turns around to see what's going on, right? And then there you are. Especially if you have two people, because you can both wheelbarrow, both dogs, right? And then the only thing they can do is hold on to each other. And more likely, they're going to turn around and be like, what are you doing to me? Like, why are you pulling on my legs, right? And then you can have a wheelbarrow race and put them back in the kennels. <laughs> <laughs> but like I said, just be careful because that leash pressure, anytime you're going to put your hands in, in a dogs that are fighting, they don't know, right? Their mind is focused on one thing. That's biting the other dog, protecting themselves. So they're going to bite whatever they get a hold of. So when he lets go of that other dog, you better be prepared, especially if you're doing that leash pressure like I just told you. Number one, as soon as he comes off that bite, that hand better get out of the way, and this hand better be controlling the dog, right? Don't let go of that. And as soon as you let go of the collar, they're probably going back into it, right? And so if you have two people doing it, and you get a dog off, you need to keep them separated because what's going to happen, you let your dog go, she runs over now, she's latching onto her while she's holding the other dog, right? So you need to hold on to both dogs. Banging bowls, right? I don't care, make noise, break stuff. I don't, you know, it's a great reason to break stuff. Um, we do not break loud... anything permanent because we have no more money to fix it. <laughs> yeah. So just break stuff that can be easily replaced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. no, no windows. <laughs> don't be hitting with light bulbs. Mike, Mike's going to kill us if he has to replace another window. <laughs> but yeah, anything you can do to, to make loud noises, right? Anything that's going to scare the dogs to the point where they forget about each other for a second and focus on something else. Throwing a blanket over them. Um, what will happen is, believe it or not, that's recommended by AKC. Um, with the idea that you're going to disorient them. Depending on the dog... I mean, unless you're going to let them take a nap, I, I don't know. But if, if by chance you can get the blanket over them and get them separated, then, you know, hopefully you're going to have a little bit of padding between them and when they spin around to try to bite you. So are there any questions about aggressive dogs? I'm trying to keep it moving because I, I know you're all cramped in here and the are already like an hour late. So. Like what happens less where one dog is literally trying to kill the other and the other is not fighting back? So obviously we have to focus on the aggressor at that point in time, right? The one that's not fighting back is only going to defensively fight. And as soon as they break, that dog's probably taken off, getting out of the area, right? So the only thing that we can do at that point in time is focus on the aggressive dog. So depending on how many people you have there, and again, it needs to be one person that's kind of controlling the thing. Like the, Basically in, in EMS, right, when we have a patient that's on a litter, the patient that has the head is in charge. Right? It does no good for the guy at the feet to like, yeah, okay, go ahead and lift. And then this guy's, oh, oh, yeah. So the same thing with the dog, right? The person at the head of the dog who is physically taking control of the dog is in charge. Did the dog have leash and collar on? No. They had collars on, but they didn't have leash on. No leashes. Okay. So if, if there's collars on, Martingale, flat collar? Flat. Flat. Okay. Um, one of the things that I would do is grab a leash right away. Right, because that's also going to allow us to keep the dog away from us. Because when the dog comes off, he's amped up. He's just looking to bite somebody at that point, right? Um, I was I'm in actually this. holding his head because he was trying to shake her. Mm -hmm. So I was holding his head while somebody else had his legs up in the air. We blasted him in the face with a hose. Mm -hmm. We tried to stop him from biting her. Mm -hmm. And we hit him. We hit him. We tried to knock the wind out of him. I don't know what else we could have. Like, I don't know what we missed that we could. I mean. Yeah, I mean, um, again, I'll show you. Hi, puppies. Um, I'll show you gag reflex. Um, that gag reflex. Um, but there, there's sometimes that it's it's kind of uh, it's kind of waiting the dog out. Unfortunately, um, if you can do something that takes the dog's breath away, sometimes you're going to win. Sometimes it's just utter and pure exhaustion that wins that battle. Um, like I said, I'm a, I'm a big proponent of leash pressure by somebody who knows what they're doing because the dog's probably coming off to bite, right? So I wouldn't want like any of the younger volunteers trying to handle a dog like that in that situation. Um, where did he have the other dog? He had a ride through. By the throat. It was, it was uh, an adult dog and it was a four-month-old puppy. Oh, yeah, that's the perfect story. He like, ripped her throat open, mm. um, but he kept trying to shake, so I was literally holding his head so he could yeah. Yeah. But every time he was a big 
down, he got in there hard. Yes, right. And that's it. You'll see that too. And that's why I said once you separate them, like you need to keep them separated because dogs will do that. In fact, we used to encourage that in canine. We would praise the dog when he punched into the bite, right? Because we want him holding on to a suspect. Um, so dogs, most dogs, especially truly aggressive dogs, will naturally do that. They do not want to let go, um, as you found out. So at that point in time, I, I think once you've gone through some of those steps we talked about, at that point in time, it's no holds bars, whatever it takes to separate those dogs. So if that means, you know, we got to get physical. I hate to get physical with a dog because I don't necessarily think that, that always works. Um, but sometimes you don't have a choice, right? And at the end of the day, whatever saves both of the dogs' lives, the dog can get over bruised ribs. Um, so <laughs> the one, is anybody in here a wrestler in high school or anything like that? No? Just in the WWE. WWE, gotcha. Time. Okay. Yeah. Um, they call it cleaning the pumpkin. Um, I've never done it. I know that there was a judge that did it in the AKC ring, and it's basically shoving your finger up the dog's ass. Um, if it works, guys, it works, right? And if you've exhausted all methods, right, and you've exhausted all measures, um, that's enough to probably make me let go of something I'm holding on to. So, I mean, you know, it, when you're at that point and you're in panic mode, um, you know, you, you got to do it. And, like, it was crazy because we were standing there and the dogs went at it and the judge... And the dog let go, and then she went over and washed her hands and came back into the ring and yeah. uh, finished judging the class. Kicked those two dogs out of the ring, and that was it. So, what about I mean, you don't want to use your finger? Can you use an object? <laughs> like a broomstick? <laughs> <laughs> no. That's illegal. Like an inanimate object? Like a broom handle? <laughs> yeah. I'm, just, I'm just picking on you, man. You're good. Yeah, I mean, a, a pen, I guess, I guess you could. You just have to be careful that you're not doing internal damage to the dog. Um, that, that I mean, I'm sure we've concern. all like got some variety of poop on our hand, clean it up, yeah, taking I mean, the buckets out. I mean, there's there's gloves around, there's uh, there's poop bags, right? So, if, like I said, at that point, it's basically no holds bar. You're going to do what you can do to get the dog separated. So, it is a technique. It's not one that I put on my slides, but it is a technique that people have used. I can't put a picture of that in the slide. I mean, you could, you could, but then we're getting into a, a whole another thing um, that we're discussing. Can you show us? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come here. No. Yeah. 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 Oh, so he threw us a cop a donut, right? <laughs> <laughs> I see what's going on here. I'm going to eat this. I thought they just gave you a donut. They just threw me a donut. Oh, all right. Uh, I, but, I, I mean, I, I guess it would look something like... <laughs> <laughs> That's a tight donut. <laughs> <laughs> so okay so yeah um you know like i said you got to do what you got to do at that point so you're going to exhaust all methods um bite sticks like i said what yeah, about lock jaws? Uh, uh, yeah lock jaws are tight uh bite sticks you're probably going to break teeth um so be aware of that i mean if that's, that's, that's pretty like significant the Figure, okay, so just saying that's like no other methods are working. Mm -hmm. That is the last thing that you have to do to try and do this. Would you still try? Oh, yeah. Yeah, at that point, I'm, I'm doing whatever. <laughs> like I said, I'm, if i got to use a finger, I'm using a finger. It, yeah, it's whatever it is. We were like going on half hour. There were three of us trying to get this Man. job off. Yeah, that's, in, that's crazy. That's, yeah. Was anybody scared there? We tried what? Was anybody scared trying to break it up? I think the the dog's owner was definitely because the dog went from one extreme to the next has never seen something like that. Sure. I'm sure she was fearful. Um, you know, possibly others around could be fearful, but those in control of the actual dog were pretty Okay, but I guess like when but the, the dog, the owner was probably yeah. I mean, would yeah. you if you you know yeah. if you had no All experience scared, doing right? this, and I you mean, saw the dog yeah, basically scared. ripping this other dog's throat out, you know, you can only tell somebody to stay calm as much as possible, but right. you can't necessarily tell her to just go away from this when we need the help. So that that's something too. If there's if there's an able body person there to help, what is something that you could do to help them? Like, calm down. Yeah. It. I mean, 
If we have dogs latched onto each other like that, I'm going to take everybody leave. that's completely freaking out and get them out of the room. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. it's only going to so continue to amp the dog, right? So if the owner's there and the owner's flipping out, get her the hell out of the room, yeah. right? So we can focus on what we're doing. I don't need another person getting stupid, putting her hands in there where they don't belong, right. screaming, laying all over the dogs like, yeah. that's not going to do anything to break up the fight, man. Get yeah. the hell out of the way. So somebody needs to grab her. Right, choke her out if you have to. Don't use the finger. And <laughs> um, so I, I don't. That's last resort, right? Um, that's so that's definitely a lawsuit. Right? Yeah. So, but it, I'm seriously though, get them out of the room, right? They're only going to amp the dog up more and more. So the, of course the dog is not going to let go. Any questions about aggressive dogs? I don't, I don't have a question, but I just want to share something. Sure. Fire one. So, I have two German Shepherds, I got into a fight, and my first reaction is I grabbed my belt, and I did the gag reflex. Mm -hmm. So, ever since then, when I work with doors, I always have a belt on me. Because sometimes, that's a great point. I'm not telling the doors to go get a loop. Yeah. So that's yeah. something that, that, that... That's excellent. That's a that's a great idea. That's perfect. Yeah. Um, hoodie strings. I guess I, you think about a lot of stuff that we could use, right? That, and that's that's excellent. Um, purse purse strap, mm -hmm. right? Any just remember, right? You know, yeah, right. Um, just remember, some purses once they're on the bite, unless you're going to move it up under the dog to get it around the neck, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. But that, that's an excellent point. I didn't even consider that. But yeah, anything that you have on your person, anybody's wearing the old bling bling, right? You could use that. Um, would you Would you recommend that? we require anybody in the kennel at all times to have some form of leash on them yeah yeah i, I don't i don't think that's a bad idea so guys um, we were talking about briefly on facebook about the slip leads that we need the four foot and the six foot the six foot obviously for walking dogs out of the kennel maybe it would be a good investment if somebody if you guys want to buy your own just so you have it um we have very thin slip leads but in a case of emergency i'm sure you could use it we have, rather, we have those plentiful, but if somebody wants to get their own, always have it on them. Maybe we should have that be a rule where we always have a leash on us at all times. Quite honestly, the thinner the better. The thinner the better. Okay. Because when you think of it, because think about it, right? Um, every like, if you ever watch the the movies, right? They're always when they're. I hate to be gory, but when they're killing people, right, they're always using, like, thin wire and stuff like that, right? They don't, like, you know, take a strap that's that big and tie it around their neck and, like, try to choke them out. So, yeah. Um, perfect. The other thing is, and that brings up a great point, there's no reason um, that you can't have a leash on your person at all times. Um, when I am working with my dogs, now oh, these are a little bit... Short, right? But, That's right? It's that simple. Yeah. Um, to put a leash around your back. I always kept like a leather lead as a canine handler. I always had a, a either one a three footer around my waist, right? Some of you are a little too skinny for that, but uh, I was, you know, got bigger in my old age. Um, and you can always always carry a leash like this, right? Why not have it on you? Um, even if it's just a dog gets loose, and now you have a leash that you can quickly, you know, <laughs> slide your arm through and get it back off, right? Um, so with the, so that's obviously with a slip lead, it's a little bit different um, because with a slip lead, you're going to almost have to double it, right? To, but remember, when you do this, you're getting darn close, right? Because now I'm bending down to the dog's level to get it around their throat. So where's my face? Right by that dog. So you need, if you're doing that, you better be turning your head because that dog comes off of that bite, you're getting bit right in the face. Um, the arms, they heal quickly. Um, like I said, chicks dig scars, but the face, not so much. Um, so I wouldn't recommend the face. But if you have a lead like that or a lead like this one, right, drop it, slide it under the dog's neck, keeping your hands out of the way as much as possible, tighten down, slide up the dog's neck, and then start pulling, right? You're going to hit that gag reflex, and you'll know if you hit it. If you can't, if you're just choking a dog out, you didn't hit the gag reflex. Slide that collar up as high as you can under that throat. And upward pressure, and the dog should spit. Um, it hasn't failed me yet. So, um, but yeah, wrap it around your waist, put it in your pocket. I don't really care how you do it, but you should have a leash on you, right? That's your job here is to handle dogs. So, um, you know, doctor walks around with a stethoscope around his neck, right? Sometimes I question, you know, whatever. Um, but <laughs> some doctors aren't quite doctors anymore, right? But. Um, so that's definitely a great point, and that's that's excellent. A belt, a 
a purse strap. Um, I don't care. Use it. Use what you got to separate them at that point. Um, I like I said, I'd really recommend looking into the citronella. I'm sure we could put it on our wish list and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. And the air horns for sure. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't, yeah, I can't she's really lucky she's alive. I can't imagine. So. Yep. What were they for? Huh? What were they for? The citronella. The pit bull. But like I said, hoodie. You, said, you got your hoodie what strings, what right? We always lose them anyway. Um, what is it? Quick stop? Um, <laughs> direct stop. Direct stop. stop. Direct stop. But I'm sure there's a lot of different, you know, brands and things like that. Is there but. something that people can Google, like, like quick stop? Because I'm sure if you put like dog, like dog bite. Thing, sometimes it'll come because I've seen them at Cabela's. It's like bear mace and yeah, I wouldn't recommend bear mace. Terrorist mace. Um, I'm telling you, pepper spray guys is bad news. Um, that's Hulk. the most scared I've ever been. How about Hulk? If you're trying to break up a fight and you pepper spray yourself, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I guarantee, you, as soon as you get into that cloud, number one, you're not going to be able to breathe because that was my panic. I could not see, I could not breathe, and everybody says, "Well, just stick your face in water." Let me tell you about that. <laughs> um, so they actually got in a lot of trouble um, because they sprayed it. They made us hold our eyes open and sprayed it into our eyes and into our mouths. Um, oh, yeah, it was very sadistic, and they got in a lot of trouble for it. Um, but they said, we're going to be nice, and we're going to let you go dunk your head in that water, right? So initially, and I'd been, you know, I was in the Army, so uh, I'd gone through the gas chamber, right? So I'm like, this can't be that bad, right? So I go over, and there's this tub of water there, and I'm super excited, and I put my face in it. Because you had to fight, right? So you get sprayed, and then you have to fight and handcuff a guy and take a gun and da-da-da-da-da. And so the whole time your face is on fire, you can't see, your vision's blurred. Um, you know, you can't breathe, so you're panicking. So I put my face in this water, and I, they told you, open and close your eyes three times and pull your face out. And so I was like, I put my face in the water, and I was like, this is awesome, right? This is so much better. This is cake compared to CS. Um, yeah, yeah. And then I pulled my face out of the water, and it felt like somebody poured gasoline on my face and lit a lighter. Uh, I would not, if you've been pepper sprayed, I, I would never recommend that experience to anybody. So Lorraine, I, we are not going to Hilo school. I don't, yeah, I don't recommend it with dogs. Um, you know, to each their own, if it's what you have on you and you want to attempt it, go ahead. But realize that everybody that's in that circle when that gets sprayed is done. As soon as those dogs are separated, they're out of the fight. So somebody else needs to be stepping in and getting hold of the dogs because they're going to need decon. And then those people... Every bit of clothing they have on and stuff like that is all going to need decon. So I went home that night. I was super happy. I drove home in my Jeep with my face in front of the air conditioner. Um, and I'm apparently one of the people that pepper spray bothers forever. They said 45 minutes and it would be done. They said milk is a great thing. So I had a gallon of milk. They said Dawn dish soap will stop the burning. So I had Dawn dish soap in my locker at the academy. Um, I poured an entire gallon of milk over myself. It did not help. <coughs> Um, I put Dawn dish soap in my eyes to try to get the pepper spray out. It didn't work. Um, yeah, so eight hours later, I took my test holding my eyes open and then drove home with my face in front of my air conditioner vent all the way home, which probably looked really good going down the highway, um, coming from the police academy, you know? Um, so, yeah. And then when you get a shower that night, it comes back around. So, yeah, um, don't let it go down your butt crack. Um, you know. <laughs> True story. Um, it, it gets really rough down there. So. so maybe we should get like a dog fight emergency station around in a couple places. That or a way bag. everybody knows where it is to grab it, where we don't have to leave. Quick grab bag. Like yeah. the scene of whatever. It could be in a couple places. Yeah, put a scrunch. Please. Put a scrunchies. Scrunchies, scrunchies neat. Like I'm not even. I'm not even kidding. Hair ties. Banana clips, whatever, because... When we were breaking up that fight, I was yelling for somebody to grab me a scrunchie because when I was in there, and yeah. my hair was covering yep. my face. Oh, yeah. Yep. And if the dog gets tangled up in that hair, well, and, yeah. And quite honestly, guys, they can, right they can grab her by the hair. She could have yeah. got killed. Quite honestly, if you're working around dogs a lot, you should put your hair back or up. Yeah. You really should because it's a weapon. Like, it's it's a vulnerability. It's a vulnerable billet. Vulnerability. Thank you. Vulnerability. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, so it is something that makes you very vulnerable when you're dealing with dogs, right? Why give them something else to get a hold of? Especially if you're going to work, if you're one of the more seasoned people and you're going to work with aggressive dogs, put your hair up. Um, it's not going to feel good getting ripped out of your skull, and it will happen. Um, chunks. So, um, 
So I'm going to stop my camera because I'm sure my professor is going to be sick of listening to me at this point. He's going to like the donut touch you did. I'm going to make him watch my pre our presentation that I just did. <laughs> so any other anything else on the the topic of aggressive dogs and fights? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just have a point to make about like when we were doing like the deep cleaning and we were raising all the dogs. Sometimes you have like bonded pairs that are in the kennels together. But if you have a really dirty dog and that's how that dog knows that dog smells, and you go and bathe the dog and put these perfumes on them and they smell completely different, if you walk that dog into the kennel, the other dog's gonna flip out. Yes. I know because I got bit by one. So don't just make sure walk you the a clean dog yeah, into the other okay. kennel without introducing them first because it's gonna be confusing. Good point. Good point. So everybody heard that, right? Dog, like I said earlier, right? The dog's strongest sense is their smell, right? Their olfactory sensors, they have a lot more than we do. Um, I could never smell half the drugs that my dog did, but, uh, you know, he knew that they were there, so good for him. I can't smell when somebody has a low blood sugar, but he could. Um, so basic dog handling skills. This is going to go quickly, right? Is the collar fitted properly? I recommend that we do not use snap collars in dog rescue, ever. I don't like snap collars, period, right? Snap, collar. snap like collars, the, the ones that have the buckles, oh, that's right? What we use. Put them around so the neck and they have the buckles. Yeah, they break open. Yep. Like cats. They yeah, pull. Cats. And if you do get two dogs that are going at it, guess what? That's a bad time for a kennel to, or for a collar to snap. Yeah. And it, it, as soon as a dog comes into my training facility, if they have a snap collar on, it comes off, goes on the shelf to go home with them. And uh, I put a flat collar on the dog. With a buckle? Yeah. No buckle. No. I do not recommend buckles. So how, what kind of no collar? Kind of collar? Just a regular flat collar. How does it well, how close? How does it close? Just you put it through and you put the little hole. Like a buckle, Like yeah. a buckle, like a belt buckle. Yeah, not like, not like a seatbelt. We don't, belt. We don't yeah. allow any buckle collars here. Because in group play, they get tangled in and then you can't get them off. So we have them all quick release. Is there a better suggestion that you would have for something like that? Um, I, I, you know, it's your policy and you got to weigh it out, but I would, I can understand both sides of the equation. Um, I think that's definitely something that you have to pay attention to, but my only worry is again, if we have an aggressive dog that decides to go after another dog and that collar snaps, you just lost control of your dog. Maybe. Um, so you're putting a lot of faith into, unless you're weakly. Um, looking at those buckles to make sure that they're not showing any signs of stress. So let's say we're going to use buckle collars, right? So when we take those collars off and we're bathing dogs and stuff like that, look at the buckle. You can see it's starting to stress. Guys, you were in rescue. So especially if we're taking collars off, putting collars on, taking collars off, putting... Every time we do that, it's weakening. It's never the, as good as it was the day before. So at least look at them and say, this is starting to tear. The stitching is coming out. This plastic is starting to get weak, right? Um, I would recommend if you're going to have buckle collar, are they metal or are they plastic? They're plastic. They're plastic. And the majority of the dogs that are here are not aggressive. There's only a, a few, small few that are aggressive. And then when they leave the facility, they're on martingales, so they can't slip out. Gotcha. Yeah, so, I mean, the only thing I would say is if we're going to use buckle collars on aggressive dogs and that, that's the policy, I would recommend metal ones for them because they have less stress. Harnesses. What? Harnesses, we just pick them up. Harnesses, yep. Yeah, you can use harnesses. Yeah, nothing wrong with harnesses. I like the I like the control that a harness gives, especially on a really solid puller. Um, that's a, good, a great point. You know, um, if we're worried about a dog breaking a collar, then put the dog on a harness to walk. Right, that way it's walking. It's about playtime. Like we're an aggressive a dog that potentially could bite somebody or bite another dog. With them being in the harness, they're able to be picked right up. I think if we're worried about dogs getting tangled in collars, then dogs should not have harnesses on while they're playing. That's my professional opinion, because he's going to step his leg down through that harness, and now, now we're going to have an issue because you're going to get a leg break. So if we're going to say we're going to use buckle collars because of playing, then why would we put a harness in the dog? I'm, right. I'm, I'm just saying with my aggressive, one of my dogs that was supposed to be aggressive, I put mm -hmm. a harness on him, and any time he went at another dog, I just picked him right up. And there was no problem well, at all. Yeah, I mean, depending on the dog, um, I want you to pick up my 225 pound mastiff by a harness. It's not going to happen. So, but in that case, yeah, in that case, that's okay. I mean, 
Yeah, right. Not the, what you and I can do compared to what, you know, not maybe everybody's a is muscle marinara. Or, or, yeah, there, right. Yeah. <laughs> you got that Jersey accent. Listen. I'll probably break them up, put them down. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm old, man. I'm getting old. Southern Jersey. No, it's from Staten Island. Staten Island? Uh oh. Um, I rescue pit bulls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're used to that. Um, I love my pitties. I love my pitties. See, Gloria? See? I love my pitties. I, I got a soft spot for pitties. So, we won't discuss that, though. Um, slip lead or clip leash? Um, safety slide, right? So, where's that slip lead? I don't think Other one? If you're going to use a leash like this, right, there's this little safety slide. Put it down, mm -hmm. right, so the dog doesn't back out. Right? It just gives it a, a little bit more of a firm hold, other than leaving this at the other end of the leash where it doesn't belong, and then that going like that and popping off the dog. Right? So, um, and the other thing is if you're going to use a clip leash, make sure the clip is good. Right? If it's not spring, do it with your finger first before you put it on the dog, because it, it's a heck of a time to figure out as the dog's running away that your clip was no good. Right? So, spring it with your fingers, make sure that it's good. This applies to your dogs at home too, right? Not just uh, not just ones here at the rescue. Keep the dog close, hand 12, in 12 inches from the collar. So when we're walking around the kennel facility, I don't recommend you leave the dogs at the end of the leash and let them just approach whoever they want to approach. Um, in the AKC ring, you are very closely monitored for your handling of the dog. So when I walk in with my Swiss Mountain Dog, my hand is down by her neck. She literally has maybe three inches from my hand to her collar. Right, and um, I'm keeping her under control at all times. Because if she bites somebody, or another dog bites her because they're not hand and don't get me wrong, the worst people for this are the ones that have the little fluffies, right? Because they let their dog just walk up under my Swiss Mountain Dog, and luckily she's cool with it. But I mean, if she wasn't, like she could pee on them or something. I don't know. So, um, you know. Up and down the halls of the kennel, you should always have them right next to you. They shouldn't have any lead whatsoever. Yep. Because they go. That's how. Dogs have been getting injured, and they allow them to go. Yep. They give them, you know, two or three feet, and yep. they go up to another kennel door, and then somebody bites somebody's yep. foot. Or... Yeah. So yeah, you should be keeping those dogs close right. to you in and out of the kennel, right? right? <laughs> um, when you're when you're walking around, you know, around town or whatever, sure, you can give them some lead. But remember, when you start to close the distance with another person walking a dog, even if you know you have the friendliest, sweetest little husky in the world, you don't know a Fido over there is that friendly, right? And a lot of times, it's a great point to bring up, a lot of times people don't know their dogs are aggressive or they refuse to accept it. I don't know how many times. I had a dog the woman said was great, jumped up and bit me in the mouth. Um, oh, she's such a sweetheart. Oh, yeah, look at her. And she was the first lesson. She was great. For some reason, it's that second time. You know what I mean? And I didn't even expect it, and she'd come up and got me right in the lip. Um, so, you know, lesson learned, right? Don't get, don't let the deal. And I, it's not like I bent over to give Fluffy a kiss. Fluffy literally jumped and bit me in the face. Um, but she didn't want to do what she, you know, the lesson that we were doing, so she thought she was going to challenge me. So I spit some blood and came back over. I was like, all right, Fluffy, let's split lip. Now you and I are going to do this. Um, and Fluffy didn't win that fight. So... Um, but 12 inches from the collar, right? Keep the dog under control in the facility. Give warnings before entering and exiting areas, right? Dog coming out, dog coming in, right? Wait for the okay. Also, with coming in and out of the kennel, if the dog's dragging you out of the kennel, do not take the dog.